the uh, services just got underway. In fact, there were uh, a long, there was a long queue snaking behind me around the corner. Uh, as uh, friends, uh, or- organisations, uh, the family of uh, Stephen Lawrence uh, queued to uh, enter the service to remember uh, Stephen Lawrence, who died on this day 30 years ago, murdered by uh, a group of uh, five racist uh, young men. Uh, and then, of course, uh, uh, the way the police handled uh, their case um, uh, led to the McPherson inquiry, which, of course, brought about changes to uh, policing and uh, famously called the Mets uh, institutionally racist, a label which Baroness Casey uh, recently a- a applied to the force and said, uh, in effect, that, look, the force hasn't changed in 20 years. So at the moment, they're gathering to remember Stephen Lawrence, who, remember, at the heart of this, uh, re- trying to remember a family who uh, lost a, a, a boy only 18 years old in Eltham in South East London in 1993. And to remember his life, first of all, and who he was, he uh, was into music, into R&B, uh, soul music. Uh, he was also into art and design. He wanted to become uh, an architect. And so they're remembering his life and not just who he was, but also who he could have been and that is why uh, three years ago they set up the Stephen Lawrence Foundation who's, who were behind today's memorial service uh, and they're leading uh, the Stephen Lawrence Day today uh, so it's not only about remembering Stephen Lawrence but also his legacy who he may have been and also how they can increase opportunities in society for young people who have felt marginalised so they've announced that they're uh, campaigning for more scholarships, uh, research initiatives and pilot career schemes for Uh, young people from uh, marginalised backgrounds and they're doing it in three ways through classrooms, through communities and through careers. So in terms of classrooms, trying to get school children to be more ambitious and uh, if they come from a marginalised background in particular not to think within uh, the the boundaries of that glass ceiling that society uh, can impose on some parts of society but also to talk then uh, about uh, careers in terms of where they want to go in future and then also about communities connecting different parts of the community together so that there's more cohesion and in their words trying to achieve a more ethical fairer more uh, balanced society where there is more opportunity for all trying to reduce inequality so today isn't just about remembering Stephen Lawrence paying tribute uh, to him and to the work that his family have undertaken since then their fight for injustice and also talking about of course Uh, the changes to policing and the changes that the Metropolitan Police is still trying to instill. It's also about trying to uh, create a a wider change into society. But the service is uh, underway now uh, behind me and it's due to finish uh, around about 12.30. And Paul, um, I think Sadiq Khan and Keir Starmer were both expected to attend this afternoon. Have, have Have you seen them arrive? Yep, Sadiq Khan and uh, 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 Sakir Starmer uh, both entered uh, a short while ago. Also, Rishi Sunak in attendance as well. There are also um, people from a wide sector of society, to be honest. There are actors, musicians, campaigners, journalists in there we've seen. And Naomi Harris, who plays Moneypenny in the Bond films, Ben Bailey-Smith. Uh, an actor, a poet, a comedian, also known as Doc Brown. The journalist Clive Myrie, Jon Snow as well, formerly of uh, Channel 4 News. Uh, Floella Benjamin as well, now known as Baroness Benjamin. She's there also, the TV presenter Jay Blade. So there are people in there from a wide society, from a wide, uh, all different parts of society, I should say. Uh, all of them with that common theme of social injustice that are connected to Stephen Lawrence, his family and the Stephen Lawrence Foundation.